Good afternoon, brothers and sisters. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. May the Lord be with you. Also with you. We've come to worship our great and powerful God. Amen. Amen. Uh, we come here because our Creator, the ruler of the heavens and the earth, has made us, saved us, and calls us into his presence. And the psalmist says, shout for joy to God all the earth. Sing the glory of his name. Give to him glorious praise. Amen? Amen. We come because the Son of God himself has taken upon himself our humanity. He's entered into our world. He's invaded a rebellious world of sinners like you and me, saying this, I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against this. Again, amen. amen. We come especially this afternoon, this evening, because God has doubly called. Not just us, but it's called uh, here our brother Lee to be a child of God, to be a preacher of the word, so that in this place the gates of hell might be resisted, an outpost of heaven might be established. Lost sinners like him, me, you, might come to worship their creator and redeemer. Amen. Amen. And amazingly, it's by the ministry of men that the sovereign Savior has decided to accomplish his work of saving sinners, building his church, establishing his kingdom on this earth. And as the Apostle Paul says uh, in Ephesians chapter 4, which I think is on the screen for us to read together responsibly, uh, I'll read the, the normal print, and I believe it's in gold. Is that right? In red, sorry, in red. So I'll read the normal print. Je uh, the Apostle Paul says this, Jesus gave the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the shepherds, and teachers. And let's all say, to the saints for the work of the ministry. For the building up of the body of Christ, until we all attain the unity of the faith and the knowledge of the Son of God, to mature manhood, to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ, so that we may no longer be children, tossed to and fro by the ways, and carried about by every wind of doctrine, by human cunning, by craftiness in deceitful schemes. Paul goes on to say, rather speaking the truth of love, we are to grow up in every way into him who is the head, into Christ, from whom the whole body, joined and held together by every joint with which it is equipped, when each part is working properly, makes the body grow so that it builds itself up in love. And come because this great God calls us into his presence. Let's give, let's give him thanks. Let's ask his blessing and especially give ourselves to Him for this afternoon in worship. Let's pray together. Almighty and everlasting God, the God and Father of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, You've blessed us in the heavenlies with every single spiritual blessing. Outside of You, Lord, we need nothing. We find it all in You, especially because You are a Father to us, in Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior. You're always more ready to hear us than we are even to pray. You are always more ready to give than we desire or deserve. What a God you are, Heavenly Father. We adore you, we bless you, we worship you. And now we dare to enter into your presence to ask that you would pour down upon us your Holy Spirit, that we experience your abundance, and lavishness of mercy and grace, to experience your forgiveness of those things which our own consciences are afraid even to confess and forgive those things to you. And that we might experience in this place together as brothers and sisters all those good things which we are not even worthy to act. And we ask these things boldly and confidently, only for the merits and the mediation of Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, and all of God's people say, Amen. Amen. Come to RCLA. Um, I would please ask that you stand and worship with us today because Psalm 34, 1 3 tells us, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul may give boast from the Lord. Let the humble hear and be glad. O oh, magnify the Lord with me, and let us exalt his name together.
family. Christ calls us to share the heavenly banquet of his love with all the saints in the earth and heaven. Knowing our worthiness and sin, let us ask from him both mercy and forgiveness. Join me in a word of prayer. Eternal God, in every age you have raised up men and women to live and die in faith. Forgive our indifference to your will. You have commanded us to speak, but we have been silent. You have called us to do what is just, but we have been fearful. Have mercy on us, your faithless servants. Keep before us faithful people for us to follow, so that by the power of your Holy Spirit, we may grow in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, to the praise of your holy name. And all God's people said, Amen. Let us now take a silent moment of confession before God and one another. Family, hear the good news. You are no longer strangers and aliens, but you are citizens with the saints and also members of the household of God. Built upon the foundation of the apostles and the prophets with Jesus Christ himself as the cornerstone. In him the whole structure is joined together and grows into a holy temple in the Lord, in whom you are also built together spiritually into a dwelling place for God. Know that in Jesus, God embraces you, forgives you, and strengthens you to live a renewed life. Thanks be to God. Revelation 5, 9 to 13 tells us, And they sang a new song, saying, You are worthy to take the scroll and to open its seals, because you were slain. And with your blood you purchased for God persons from every tribe, and every language, and people, and nation. You have made them to be a kingdom and priests to serve our God, and they will reign on the earth. Then I looked and heard the voice of many angels, numbering thousands upon thousands, and 10,000 times 10,000. They encircled the throne and the living creatures and the elders. In a loud voice they were saying, Worthy is the Lamb who was slain to receive power and wealth and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and praise. Then I heard every creature in heaven and on earth and under the earth and on the sea and all that is in them say, To him who sits on the throne and to the Lamb be praise and honor and glory and power forever and ever.
joy for me to be here. This is a special day. Uh, we're here to ordain Rudy. We will ordain the Rudy for the Minister of the Iglesia Romana America. So I'm, I'm glad to be here. Thank you for inviting me Rudy, to come and to celebrate with you. This is a special day. This is, this is a great day. I remember when I was ordained by the classes of Ontario in Toronto. Uh, more than you know, more than 20 years ago, uh, it was a beautiful day to come and see uh, receive the blessings of of the pastors, the affirmation of my friends and my colleagues in ministry, and their uh, blessing for my ministry. So we're here to do that uh, for Rudy, uh, and uh, it will be a great day. So. Um, I am also glad to be here. Thank you for the prayers. Uh, you might see that I am dealing with Bell's palsy. This is the second time it's happened to me. Uh, it is, um, you know, uh, the doctor, my doctor in California, when it happened the first day, he said, don't worry about it, it's going to be done quick, so you don't, you don't need to do anything. So my doctor in Michigan, he's a little more careful. He said, well, I really need to rule out a lot of different things. So he took me, he did a, a brain MRI, he did blood work, he did a lot of different things. And at first, you know, I didn't want to do that. You know, some, some men, we have that problem. I don't know if, just, if it's just me, but some men don't like to see the doctor. Are you with me? Yeah. So I, I, I didn't like to see the doctor. I said, my wife, it's fine. You know, my doctor in California said that this is, it's going to go away. She said, no, you better listen to the doctor. So I did the whole thing, and uh, I'm blessed that uh, the doctor called me and said everything is good, and this has to be stress related. I said, yes, so I'm a pastor. <laughs> so, so right now, so I have just a, a smile now. I'm just speaking on one side of my mouth, but not because I want to, okay? So I just, just want to be honest with the things that I want to say to you today in sharing this uh, this important passage for me. So, so let us come to the word. Let us come to read uh, the second letter of Timothy. Uh, second letter of Paul's, uh, this, uh, Paul's second letter to Timothy, chapter 1. And I want to read uh, from chapter uh, verse 1 to verse 5. Second Timothy, chapter 4, verses 1 to 5. And, and this is I, I believe this is one of, one of the important passages in the New Testament that talk about the ministry of pastors, the ministry of a pastor, the calling of a person that has been uh, installed and served as a ordained as a pastor of God's word. So 2 Timothy chapter 4, verses 1 to 5. Hear the word of the Lord. In the presence of God and of Christ Jesus, who will judge the living and the dead, and in view of his appearing and his kingdom, I give you this charge. Preach the word. Be prepared in season and out of season. Correct, rebuke, and encourage with grace, patience, and careful instruction. For the time will come when people will not put up with the sound doctrine. Instead, to suit their own desires, they will gather around them a great number of teachers to say, uh, to, uh, a great number of teachers to say their itching ears, uh, to say what their itching ears want to hear. They will turn their ears away from the truth and turn aside to the myth. But you keep your head in all situations and your hardship. Do the work of an evangelist. Discharge all the duties of ministry. This is the word of the Lord. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, thank you. Thank you for this wonderful day, Lord. This is the day, Lord, that you have made, and we are rejoicing in this day. Thank you for giving us the blessing, Lord, to gather in this place to worship you and to celebrate the ordination 
to the ministry of word and sacrament of my dear friend and brother Rudy Rubio. Thank you for your presence in this place. Thank you for giving us, Lord, the opportunity to, to confirm and to bless our fellow pastors. And today we're here to bless you. Speak to us, Lord. Speak to us because your people are listening. We pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. So, so today I don't want to bring a long sermon. I just want to say two things. Uh, and, and I just want to say, you know, the, the, the joy and the challenge of pastoral ministry. The joy and the challenge of pastoral ministry. So in this passage here, Paul is talking, he's talking about that. You know, Paul has his disciple. Timothy was, was his disciple and Timothy was doing ministry in a city where young pastor, new pastor, rookie pastor, doing ministry in a difficult city. The city of Ephesus was a complicated city. And Timothy was sent to do ministry in that context, in that city, in that place. Just, just like you, you are doing ministry in LA, in Lingwood. This is a complicated city. Uh, and, and it relates to the importance of pastoral ministry. And Paul here is talking about the joy. The joy of, the joy of ministry, but also he said he's talking also about the challenge of ministry. Ministry is complicated. You know, that, that is the reason why Paul used to say that in his body he had the marks of Christ. So the mark of Christ, you know, pastors carry in their own bodies as they continue to do the ministry. Ministry, and let me, let me start with, you know, the, the, the importance and the joy of ministry first. So ministry is a sacred calling. So it's a calling from God to us, to some people that have been called to do that. Ministry is not for everyone. Ministry is a special, sacred calling that God gives to some people. Because we minister in the presence of God. So ministry is not, it's not, it's not a job. You know, when people are trying to find a job, they can do that. And uh, if, they, if they think, you know, I'm gonna plant a church because I wanna have a job. I think that's the wrong way to plant a church. We don't serve the church because we want to have a job. We serve the church because that is the reason why we have been called, called by God. And that's a beautiful joy that some people have. So Martin Lloyd Jones said a couple of things and I wanna I wanna I just wanna share with you really today as you will be ordained some of the things that this great theologian have to say about about the ministry. And he said, you know, if if there is anything else that a man can do other than preaching, he ought to do it. The pulpit is not a place for him. If there is anything else that a man can do other than preaching, he ought to do it because the pulpit is not, is not for him. What does that mean? You know, the, the, the reality of the calling of God in the life of someone is so important. So important. So the ministry is not very something an individual can do, but it's something that an individual must do. Because that individual has been called to serve God in that capacity. Has been called to serve God in that capacity of preaching. So only those who believe that they are chosen by God for the pulpit should proceed undertaking that role. We have to be convinced that we have been called to the ministry. Because ministry is difficult. Ministry is complicated. You know, some people say, I don't like to, I don't like, you know, I don't like to have a daily work, I, you know, I, I, I better become a pastor. That's the wrong thinking. Because pastoral ministry is complicated. And, and I can tell you that, the reality of that. So, so what constitutes then this call to preach? So Martin Lloyd Jones talks about six different things. So the first one, you know, what constitutes a calling to the, to the, to the ministry? So first, there has to be an inner compulsion. You as a pastor really need to be called to do that. You know, you really need to be, there has to be an inner confirmation, you know, within your heart. 
within your mind, your heart, your own being. You know, this is what gives me joy. It gives me joy to share the gospel. It gives me joy to preach. It gives me joy to study the Bible. It gives me joy to share the gospel, to teach, you know, the Bible to the people. So there has to be an inner, you know, inner confirmation of that call. And, and, and that's, a, that's a reality that all of us need, need to be in that. And, 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 and I'm, a, I'm, a, you know, I'm a witness that this is a reality for Rudy. You know, I know Rudy, since, since you joined us uh, many years ago, and, and I, I could see that in you, Rudy, that, that you were really committed to study the Bible, you were committed to, uh, and you told me one day, you know, I have lost many, many years, and I want to make up all of these years that I have lost because of my wrong choices in life, and now I want to make up that, you know, that, that those years that I have lost, and I want to grow in the Lord, I want to know the Bible, and I remember those, those conversations that we used to have. Those were not conversations that I have with a lot of people that used to come to church, you know, which we used to see people coming to church on Sunday, we bless them, and then they disappear and come back again next Sunday, so those, and, and we love them. But then we have some people that had that hunger, that hunger, that desire to grow in the Lord and to follow the Lord. So first, there has to be that inner compulsion to serve the Lord and that, that, you, can, that you can say, you know, there's no other thing that I would do than preaching the, the, preaching the word to many, many people that need to hear the gospel. So the second thing that Martin Lloyd Jones talks about, he said that has to be an outside influence, outside influence. And, uh, and, and you know, when you talk about the outside influence, talking about the friends, those people who know you, those people that are outside of you, that are friends, and that they're giving you confirmation of that. And, and, and I remember uh, uh, really in your own life, in your own journey, uh, you had a lot of people blessing you, a lot of people encouraging you to say, you know, you can do this. I see this in you. And I remember I had a conversation with you one, one day, and you asked me, are you crazy, you know? Do you see me as a, as a pastor? I said, really, I can see you as a pastor. I think, I think you can do it. When you started serving, I remember you did the, the couples ministry, and I remember serving all of the couples in our church, and a lot of people confirming that. So that the outside confirmation of people is a, a reality that is important. So Martin Lloyd John continued with the third, the third sign. What is the sign, you know, for the call to ministry? So the third sign that he talks about, so he talks about loving concern. So loving people. You know, loving people is so important in the pastoring ministry. And you know, there are so many people that are so difficult to love. <laughs> Let me tell you. You know, is, is loving people easy? No, loving people is so complicated. Why? Because, you know, everybody has different ways of thinking. Everybody has different ways of saying things. And so many times, you know, we have, we have people in our church that say, oh, Lord, you know. Pastor Ken knows some of the people that I, that I just want to give them to the Lord. You know, get them together here. And I put some glass and took a fire and said, Lord, I mean, this is my offering to you, Lord. But you know, the pastor needs to love people. You know, loving people is so crucial because if we do not know, if we, if we cannot love people, we will be in trouble. Why? You know, because the same way that God loves people, we need to love them. And this is what God calls us, you know, loving God and loving people, that's so crucial for the ministry. That's so crucial for the work of the kingdom. And I'm a witness really that you love people. Honestly, let me tell you this. It is, it is, it is, uh, it is, it is it's a, it's a reality that you have in your heart, and that's why I'm excited that we're here to ordain you as a minister of the world, because you have demonstrated that you, are, you have been able to work with different kinds of people, and you love them all. So Martin Lloyd John continues, and he did the fourth sign of somebody called to the ministry. And, and the fourth sign, it talks about an overwhelming constraint. Overwhelming constraint that said, you know, 
I cannot do anything else because this passion, this call consumes me. I, you know, I, I, I go to bed at night and I'm thinking about this. I wake up in the morning and I continue to think about this and I have this desire. I have this passion. I need to do this. I'm overwhelming, constrained within the one goal to do this work. Uh, it's, a, it's a necessity. And sometimes, you know, it's an obsession to do this, to serve God and to bless people. And, and I can see that really also in your heart, in your own life. You know, how you are serious about what you want to do. You are serious. And I can see that as you have been able to connect with a lot of people. And let me tell you, you are an awesome networker. You know how to connect with people in all kinds of people. And, and I confirm that and, and thank you for doing that. Continue to do that because I, I can see this overwhelming constraining the heart to follow the Lord to, 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 to serve Jesus. So the fifth one that uh, Martin Long Jones continued to talk about a new sign of some someone that is called to the ministry is a sovereign humility. Sovereign humility. Uh, and uh, and if you're a humble background, you know, sometimes people don't understand you, but let me tell you that you are you're a humble guy. You are you connect with a lot of a lot of people and I can see the interaction that you have with, with some people uh, on social media and all that. Sometimes I don't say anything, but I just I just see how you know how you relate and talk and, 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 and demonstrate your, your humility with some some of the people that sometimes don't understand what you're saying. Sometimes I don't understand where you're coming from. Uh, but the way you connect, and this is this is on social media that everybody can read, but as a person you do that also. So 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 thank you for doing that. Keep doing, keep being who you are and, and keep keep standing for the things that you believe and keep following the Lord the, the, the way you are following him. And finally, finally, Arthur Ron talks about a sixth sign of somebody called because of our corporate confirmation. And that's why we're here. The Pastors of the Americas here today to give you a corporate confirmation of that call. And I'm excited to be here with you. I'm excited that you know I grew all the way from, from Michigan to join you here uh, and to be with you today because I believe, I believe in you. I want you to I want you to hear that. Okay? I believe in you. I believe that our future is right and it's awesome the future of the Reformed Church in America because of people like you and, and, and I believe you okay? I want you to hear that so so the, 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 the corporate confirmation and we're here to give you that corporate confirmation so that's the joy of the ministry now the challenge you want to hear the challenge of the ministry so what is the challenge then that Paul talks about here. Uh, you know, what is the challenge of ministry? I'm not too old. I'm only 48 years old. But I have been a pastor for a quarter of a century already. So I started my pastoral ministry when I was 23 years old. I was just a kid. I didn't know what I was doing. I didn't know. I had no idea of the difficulty and the challenge of the ministry, I thought that being a pastor was just reading a text on Sunday at church and preaching a sermon. And I was done. That was my idea of pastoral ministry. But very soon I found out that that's just a little piece of the ministry. Because real ministry doesn't happen on Sunday. Real ministry happens Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Saturday at 10 a.m., at 10 p.m., at 1 a.m. in the morning, at 4 a.m. in the morning, at 5 so, so ministry is all the time. I didn't know that. Uh, so I've been a pastor for a quarter of a century. And I can talk about the challenges of ministry for a long time. 
but I'm sure nobody is here to hear me talk for four hours. I prefer to share what Paul is talking about in this passage. So in chapter, you know, verse 2, uh, verse 2 and 3, actually verse 3, he says, For the time will come when people will not put up with sound doctrine. Instead, to suit their own desires, they will gather around them a great number of teachers to say what their itching ears want to hear. They will turn their ears away from the truth and turn aside to me. So, so I, I believe that the greatest challenge of the ministry right now is to preach with boldness and integrity. So boldness and integrity are so crucial for the ministry. You know, sometimes pastors are afraid to be bold. Why? Because some people sitting on the pews, they get angry with us. And if they are the ones who give, you know, the big check, you know, they are the ones who can write the biggest checks. And the pastor is, is preaching the word with boldness. You know, some people don't like that. You know, and the first thought that comes sometimes is, okay, I will, will fold my offering. And let's see how the church will be able to pay the bills. And so sometimes, you know, we you know we forget the integrity of the gospel because of that. So and Paul is saying to Timothy here, Timothy, preach with boldness. Because you know, this is this is this is not a problem of the 21st century. We're talking all the way back to the first century. So so many people, you know want to hear some of those sermons that will tell them that they are amazing, that they are awesome, and that every day is a Friday for them. You know? So, preaching the gospel with integrity is a challenge, especially today. You know, today that we're living in a culture that, you know, people wants, wants, want to live a crossless Christianity. So Christianity without a cross. So Christianity without a commitment to follow Jesus. Christianity, you know, without carrying the cross. But Jesus said, you know, if you are not, if you cannot carry your cross and follow me, you cannot be my disciple. Have we read that before? Have we read that in the gospel? So, so, so the, the challenge that Paul is giving here to Timothy, actually in the, in the first century, when Timothy was becoming a pastor in that community, in that city, Paul is saying, preach with boldness. And you know, today is a huge challenge, but it's a, it's a necessity. It's a necessity. You know, in the Reformed Church in America, I'm calling all of our pastors, leaders, to be bold and to, to call for repentance. We need to name sin. Whatever is sinful, we need to say it. And we need to call people to repentance. We need to call people to carry their crosses and to follow Jesus. Because Christianity, you know, is, is, the, is the call to, 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 to repentance. It's the call to new life. When we talk about new life in Jesus, that's what it means. Leaving behind, you know, those things that don't help us to carry the cross and to follow Jesus. And that's a challenge today more today more than ever that's a big challenge why because we want to live an easy christianity and when people hear about repentance and hear the gospel preach some people don't like that and it's what paul is saying here they will get their you know they will find pastors and, and and you know teachers that will tell them the things that they want to hear so as a pastor really, Pick up that challenge. Don't, you know, please people just because people want, want to be pleased. Preach the gospel with boldness. And it's a challenge. Don't be afraid because the Lord is with you. 
He called you and He will be with you and He will support you. Preach the gospel with passion and also with compassion. It's important to have compassion, especially right now. When we're calling for repentance and transformation, it's important to have compassion. So be a compassionate pastor, but also be a, be a passionate pastor. It doesn't change of ministry. It doesn't change of ministry. People don't, don't understand sometimes. But you do the work of an evangelist. Be bold and preach with, with boldness and also with compassion. We need leaders like you to take us to the next to the next season of our ministry. We need leaders like you that can preach about repentance, that can preach about forgiveness, that can lead the ministry into the future because God has a great future for us in the Reformed Church in America and also for us in, in this in this land. Amen? Yes, Lord Jesus, thank you. Thank you for the blessing of allowing us to be here today. Thank you, Jesus, for giving us your presence. Gracias, porque tu presencia está aquí. Ayúdanos a servirte, a seguirte todos los días. Y oro por ti, que tú lo bendigas siempre. Oro en el nombre de Jesús. Amén.
At this time, Pastor CJ and Pastor Pat are here um, in a sense to present Ruby to our classes and to the people gathering. My name is CJ. I'm Pat Dorton. And yeah, we represent the Classes of Americas, and we've been a part of the Leadership Development Committee that examined Rudy, and we are ready to present him so we can hear that as we say this together. We present Rudy Rubio, whom we have examined and we found to be a person of sound learning and Christian character. And on behalf of the Classes of the Americas, we affirm that he is ready to be ordained to the office of the Minister of Word and Sacrament.
Let us pray. God of grace, pour out your Holy Spirit, gentle as a dove, burning as fire upon you, and fill him with grace, fill him with power, for this ministry of word and sacrament, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Rudy, would you please stand up? Reverend Rudy, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, the only head of the church, I now declare that Rudy Rubio is ordained to the Office of Ministry of Word and Sacrament in Reformed Church in America. Thank the Lord.
Because now time for the music to do the times that he was there. He said they were doing the control dance. <laughs> 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 Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So this is a charge for you to to the ministry. So we know what servant of Christ. Be attentive to yourself and to all the blood that the Lord is giving to your care by the Holy Spirit. Love Jesus all the time with all your heart, with all your strength, with all your mind. Lord Jesus, feed his lambs, tend his sheep, his sheep. Be an example in speech, in conduct, in love and in faith and in purity. Attend to reading scriptures. Attend to prayer. Attend to study. Preach the word with boldness and compassion and teach you in the same way with boldness and compassion. Do not neglect the gift that is in you. Never forget that. Do not neglect the gift that the Lord is putting in your hearts, in your mind, in your, in your hands. Put these things into practice. Do want yourself to, to prayer and to all of the gift that the Lord has given you so that all may see your progress in the Lord. Pay close attention to yourself and to your teaching. Continue in these things. For in doing this, you will save both yourself and your hearers. Really guard what has been entrusted to you by the Lord through the Holy Spirit. And when the chief priest and shepherd appears, you will win the crown of glory that never fades away. First of all, I want to thank everybody for being here this afternoon. You have no idea emotions within me, just knowing and seeing all those beautiful faces, some more beautiful than others. <laughs> to spend such uh, a, a special time with me here in my family. You have no idea the hard work it took to get here and how special it is. So thank you very much. I'm overwhelmed with emotion. I, I did be private. So thank you so much for being here. But what a glorious day and what what's next for me is, is the cherry on top. We had a chance to come to share and hear the word of Christ, to hear the name Jesus over and over and over. None of us here can stand before God one day and say, hey, I never heard about Jesus. The word says that we place our trust in Him and Him alone for our salvation, we will be saved. If we believe that the Lord Jesus came into the very world that He created, that He created a path for us to be back in fellowship with His man and sin, and, and created a chasm between us, that we place our faith in Him alone, we can restore that fellowship with Christ again. Is this better? And this is the cherry on top. We have a chance to come now and partake of something that He gave us. We believe that this is much more than a remembrance. That if we come to the table with trust and faith, we will spiritually meet Christ at this table. Amen? Amen? In the same way that all of us here present in this room come from different backgrounds, different ethnic backgrounds, different um, even different types of Christian, Christian faith that are here today. The same way that we are all gathered from different places, so are the ingredients that came to form this loaf. So the grapes from different vineyards to be placed into juice and wine into these cups. Amen? Amen. And as we prepare to close off with the Lord's Supper, I want to read to you from 1 Corinthians 11 to prepare for this supper. Can I get two of my brothers 
to my ordained minister work several months or two rogue brothers to help me with communion peace. It could be the two cutest, the two youngest, the two oldest. <laughs> Anybody cute that need please stay seated? God tells us in 1 Corinthians 11 that the Lord Jesus, on the night that he was betrayed, when he had given thanks, he broke bread and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he also took the cup after supper and said, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes again. But this is something very important and very special. So we want to make sure that everybody has one last chance to confess any unconfessed sin before God to prepare our hearts to come forth to the table. Amen. So take one moment of silent confession. I would love for all of my brothers and sisters who are able to come to our table for us. So please take a moment of silent confession. Holy Spirit, you know what is in our hearts, you know what is in our lives, you know what we've done, those things that we've thought about going and what we've actually done. I pray, Lord, that you would bless every person here this afternoon, that we would be able to come and approach your table with a clean heart, with a clean mind, and with a clean conscience. Christ, name we pray. Amen. Amen. I gave us an opportunity to do that because the Lord also gives us a very strong warning that says, So whoever eats the bread or drinks the cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner, will be guilty of sin against the body and blood of the Lord. So therefore, let a person examine himself before we partake. That's how we did it in Now, I need, to remind, I need to tell you first that this table, because it is so special, it is only for those people that have placed their trust in Jesus and in Jesus alone for their salvation. If you don't know what I'm talking about, if you are not a Christian, if you don't believe, I want you to know how much you love. But this is reserved only for those people that have placed their trust in Jesus. I want you to know that the blue chalice is wine and the white chalice is juice. We do the Lord's Supper by way of intention, so we're going to ask you to come forward when the table is open. They'll tell you this is the body of Christ broken for you. This is the blood of Christ shed for you. At which time you will tear a piece of bread, dip in the cup, partake, and go back to your seats. Amen? Amen. 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 Family of God, the Lord's table is served. Please choose a line and come forward. I want you to know that the baptismal font is here in the front. Please go through to run your hands through the water and remember that your identity is in your baptism. Not in any mistakes you might make, your identity is in Christ and in Christ alone. Amen? Amen. Please come forward.
give us uh, the final benediction of the Let us go in peace. Praise God. 